Hey friends, it's Melanie with fairystampland.com. I'm coming back with you today with a new release from Heartfelt Creations. This is the Elegant Rose Frames Collection. And I'm excited about this collection. It's got beautiful roses and vintage and the colors in this collection are gorgeous. It um, coordinates with the classic rose, which I know many of us have already in our collections. And um, it comes here with three stamp and three die sets. This first one here, the Elegant Rose Frame, is gorgeous. It can be either vertical or horizontal. Um, it is just very dainty and delicate, and it has two dies. So it can cut the outer edge and also the inner. Um, you can leave this die out low if you want it to be solid in the center. Then you have this stylish rose frame, which is asymmetrical. It has a different swirl and vintage here at the bottom. And then this beautiful rose spray here at the top. This is the one we're going to be using today in today's design. Um, that one's the same. It has the same die for the inside. Then you have these gorgeous, gorgeous, medium size, medium to large, um, focal sentiments. And these are just really, really fun to play with. You can do them all in one piece, or you can hand or fussy cut them out, which is what I'm going to be doing today on the sample. Um, they're very bold, but delicate, and they can be colored where the rose petals are, or they can be just left you know, either a coordinating color or just even black and white. They're very, very beautiful. So let's put that aside. And then this is the gorgeous paper collection. I've got almost one of every sheet here, except for the sheet that we're using today. Um, the, the papers are just stunning. I don't know if I can see all of this on camera but I just wanted to give you a hint in, you know, a close-up look at some of the gorgeous co of the color schemes. There's swirls and, you know, some butterflies and there's some background words, which are gorgeous. Um, here's some lace. There's purples, there's pinks, there's mauves. These here, the dies themselves actually cut out for easy cards for, you know, quick and easy on those days that you just need a card really quick. So you could just line the dies up and those are perfect. You have lots of card panels, both six by six, A2, even sentiment panels. These are six by six panels. Same with these. And then you have your tone on tones, which a lot of these here on the back are. You also have your tags, which the, we do have coordinating dies. A lot of people don't realize, but every pack of heartfelt paper comes with these tag pages. There's two sheets in each pack. And we do have coordinating dies that cut out all of these perfectly. So then you have your tone on tones on the backs, which I use as my solid sheets, which you'll see here in today's card. Some really, really pretty solids. There's a stripe. And you've got some florals. Oh, that's gorgeous. Almost like a brocade very vintage. So I think I think you're going to really like this collection. So for today's card, we are going to do a 5 by 7. It is going to be perfect for mailing. Um, I have used an extra die with this um, to give it a little extra wow factor. And really, that is the only thing I've added to this collection is one extra die. Um, the collection speaks for itself. It makes for a very easy card. Um, I've used the outer die. Here, I'll show you the set that I'm using that I've added to it. Is the Majestic Swirl Frames. I have used this outer die to create our card base. And I've used this die here as our extra layers. 
And that is really all I've done um, along with the collection to create this card. And like I said, no extra 3D um, flowers are even necessary with this. This is ready to go and it's just as elegant as if there were the, the, the fussy 3D flowers as a lot of people say. It's got a little glitter, it's got a glam, it's, um, it's just perfect for anybody's birthday. So let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is we're going to take that large die and we're gonna do some simple die cutting. To get that shaped card base, we're gonna take that large die and cut a, lar a piece of card stock. Um, since this is five by seven, you'd need roughly 10, a little bit more than 10. Um, let me think here, 10 by seven. Um, but you're gonna fold this in half and then you're gonna cut this just slightly over the edges the edge here, the fold line. So the, and just, just in case my measurements are off while I'm sitting here thinking, all of the instructions for this card are on today's post, um, fairystampland.com and also on the Heartfelt Creations blog under this card. So in the gallery, you can find it. So, but if you go to fairystampland.com, you can also find my card and all of the written instructions and measurements. So never fail, it's there easy to find. And if you have any questions, you can always contact me. But anyways, so fold your cardstock, put the die just slightly over the edge, and that way it doesn't cut that edge out when you put it through the die cut machine. Then you're going to cut one more, and because sometimes this has lines from your plates, so we're going to use this for two reasons. We're going to cover up those lines, first of all, but we're also going to make it so it has a complete um, shape at the top. It, it covers the hinge here. So um, that makes for a, a complete card front. So we're going to glue those two together and I'm using the Art Glitter Dries, Dries Clear Glue. And hopefully I have enough in here. So we're going to just put this on here real quick. I have tried to do some of the die cutting and stuff all ahead of time, just hopefully so this card doesn't take an hour and 40 minutes like my first card did. Um, I, that was a very detailed tutorial, my butterfly card, so this one hopefully won't go that long. It does have some coloring in it, but um, I've had a lot of people request coloring videos, so I've included a little bit of coloring in this one. You're gonna use that same die, and I have used um, a sheet from, and I think it's 5A, if I'm not mistaken, from the paper pack. And this from the 12 by 12, I've cut a piece from the bottom left and a piece from the top left. And if you noticed here, it's got a little bit of the, um, a little bit of the label from the top of the paper there and I did that because this is going to be my inside piece and when the inside piece gets put in I'm going to be trimming that right here I did that so that my flowers are going to all show I wanted the cluster of flowers not to be cut off so that's the reason I did that just a little tiny trick there um, but I just loved the spray of flowers and I wanted it to continue on the inside so I've cut two of those, and this one here we're going to put so that the flowers are on the bottom left-hand side. Oh, before we do that, let me sponge with olive archival ink around the edges here. I always like to do this around the edges because it really highlights your card and gives it definition. I do this with all my solids especially the solids, the tone on tones that are in the paper pad. Um, I had a friend ask me just a couple days ago about, do you use a lot of solid cardstock? Um, we were gonna be getting together to craft and she asked me, you know, 
do you want me to bring some solid cardstock? And and I told her, well, you know what? I really don't use a whole lot of solid cardstock anymore. I used to, when I back when I was doing Stampin' Up and stuff, I used solid cardstock all the time. But now that my paper bat pads come with the tone on tone cardstock, and it matches and coordinates with the paper pads so perfectly. I just tend to use the tone on tone. Um, in this card, I didn't end up doing that. I'm, I'm using this piece instead. But usually, I have extra layers and lots of, you know, lots of layers in my cards. And I'll use the tone on tone paper. And then I'll go around the edges and make the edges darker. And I use that as my solid. And I always use the deluxe flower shaping paper as my card bases. And anytime there's a white die cut, I always use the deluxe flower shaping paper just because I love how um, supportive it is. And it's always, it's just so sturdy and perfect for die cutting. So I use that for everything that's white. So all my card bases are that. And so when I'm putting this type of paper up against that, there's no problem with thickness. So I don't need all the extra cardstock that matches everything. So that's just a little tip, saves you a little money. So I would rather have two pretty pads of paper than all the different colors in the rainbow of the cardstock. So. There, I've done that and I've darkened all the edges. So we will glue this on. Make sure when you're gluing this on that you check the orientation of your card because Miss Melanie has messed that up numerous times. Ask me how I know. I have had so many upside down cards in my lifetime that I definitely am a pro at that. So we will needs to slide up just a tad. There we go. And if you ever get this off just a tad and just a little bit somewhere, you can always also take this and do that also. And that hides a, a multitude of sins. Look at that. See that? No one would ever know that that was a tiny bit off. Isn't that perfect? There we go. Okay, so the next thing you're going to do is you're going to take the second die from the Majestic Swirls set, and you're going to cut this two times. You're going to cut it from white cardstock, which like I said, I use the deluxe flower shaping, but you're also going to cut it from the Lux Silver cardstock. And we're going to hook these together with the Dries Clear glue and we're going to offset them just a little bit. And we've got a couple little stragglers back there. Um, just a little bit so that that silver shines through and gives for both a more solid die and also a classier looking die. So I'm going to put, I always use my metal tip. Go ahead and put it around the edges first. Okay, so there's our frame. And this frame is gonna go down here and we are going to use um, 3D foam on the back of that for that layer. And we'll do that here. 
got these. These 3D foam strips are available in the Heartfelt Creations store. And they're just thin enough for these fancy dies. Then you get to laugh at me while I take take the sticker off of them. I always see see some of the the um, the online educators fight with them. Because I'm like all of you, I like to watch them teach us also. They are the masters. So Tracy and Carrie, if you're watching, we love what you do. And of course, I'm blue too. And Liz, when she gets a chance, I can't wait for, well, when I'm filming this, next month is birthday month. But by the time you guys see this, birthday month will be past. But I'm looking forward to Liz's next month. It's going to be doing a lot of videos for us. But yeah, by the time you guys see this, it will be October. Okay, let's get all this taken off. Oh, it's nice to have a little bit of nails. Not too bad. Okay, so let's see. Let's line this up here. I like to look at those tips in the center and the tips in the corner. There we go. Alrighty. So we're going to sit this aside just for a minute. And I'll put our dies back. Clear our space and we will do a little bit of coloring. Okay, so on these two, these are what we're going to be coloring. We put our little pin back here so we don't get clogged up. So like I said earlier, I use Copic markers. I am using on this, for anyone that is interested, G40, G43, G46 for the leaves. And RV63, 66, and 69 for the flowers. So I've done most of this here, but I'm gonna do this spray here so you can see what I've done here. Um, for the leaves, I'll do those first. I um, lightly go over them with the lightest color. And I don't go all the way out to the edge. I just brush it on really lightly. I'm just getting a, the paper a little bit wet. Sometimes you, it's hard to see where the leaves actually are. And this one right here is a closed bud. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that one green. Alrighty, and this one here has a little bit of leaf it looks like wrapped around that bud. Maybe a little bit back there. Alrighty, then I'll go with a little bit darker and I'm just going to flick a little bit here where the artist drawn lines are. And I don't draw just on the lines. I put, you know, a little bit. I've actually done those already right there, but just in the, that vicinity, I'm not actually going over the lines exactly. I'm just giving a little hint of a darker color down the, down the veining there. But as you notice, I'm not going out to the end. We want the difference between dark and light. Uh, 
I've already done those. All right. And then for the darkest one, I'm really just doing the stems. And I move my paper instead of my pen because when I'm doing this really delicate work, I try to keep my pen as straight up and down as possible because it's I'm just barely touching the tip of the marker to the paper because for this, I'm just getting that little tiny line there. And if the stem itself goes into the, the leaf itself, I'm filling that in. You also could go on the lines itself if you wanted to darken that in. I chose not to on this one. On my actual card, on these little guys, I actually did do that. I realized this after I had finished the project and actually took the pictures. So I didn't go in and correct the rest of them, but you guys that watch the video will actually know the secret. Um, but these guys, look, I did the actual leaves. I'll pull this up so you can see it better. I did these leaves and I did the darker lines on the leaves and that all of these I didn't. So you could see the difference. I doubt anyone will ever realize that except you guys. So shh, don't tell anybody. But that tells, shows you the difference of what it looks like. So if you like it better darkened, go ahead and put some dark lines on there. If not, just do the, the stems. On this one, I'm just gonna do for time's sake, I'm just going to do the stems. They're very tedious because they're so darn thin. You can really get out of the lines if you're not careful, which is not the end of the world, but it can get messy if if they're really out of the lines. But I always say I either have a good color day or a bad color day. On a good day, my lines look pretty good. On a bad day, they're a hot mess. So I think, I think I have them all. I think so. If not, we can come back later. Okay, so for our roses, I go over, I do rows usually one at a time because your ink is going to be blending and you don't want your alcohol ink to dry completely. Now, when I'm doing two roses that are really small and they're close together, I might do two at a time. But alcohol dries very quickly. So for, for teaching purposes, I am just going to do one at a time because I'm talking while I'm coloring. I usually leave some white around on the edges, starting lightest to darkest. Now here I'm going to go with the artist drawn lines here again. And I'm going to just add some dark where the shadows would be, which is on the inside of the flower, usually. It's wherever something is behind something else. That's where your shadows are gonna be. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do just a little bit darker. This is a very dark marker, so you don't need a lot. And then I'm going to take this light guy and I'm going to pull this out. It's like I'm dragging that color out towards the light. Sometimes when you do this, if the light marker may make this look kind of bleachy in here. If that happens, all you have to do is go back over it again with the same combination. This one here actually doesn't look that bad, but sometimes it does happen. It kind of, it's like, like this one here. You see how much darker that is than, then we've kind of lost our dark in here. It's all turned kind of the light color. So in that case, I would go back in with the medium one and just add 
a little bit more in there and look at the pop. Look how it pops. And that, so I don't see that line right there. See where the, that tip right there is? I'm gonna blend that right there. And then you can pull it all the way out if you want to. But that's how I color a rose. Here I got the light marker, so I'll go ahead and do the next one. I'm gonna put a little bit right around the rim of that rose right there. These creases is where, where I'm going, creases around the base, like where the flowers meet is kind of what I'm focusing on here, where the creases are in the rows and where like the petals reach, touch. So what do you guys think of um, these frames? Do you like frames and like easier ways of putting a card together? Or do you, when you look at these, do you just want to add roses to them, like 3D roses? My next card that will be coming out next week will have a 3D rose on it. I did get the classic rose out. But I've also done the frames in multiple different ways. So be watching um, my blog at fairystampland.com because I have used these frames in my upcoming cards in multiple different ways. I've used some um, embossing powders and different coloring. Actually, I've used embossing powders twice, white embossing powder in two different ways and colored them in two different ways. So, um, and I've used two different style roses. I've just been having a whole lot of fun with them. So, um, and I'm one that I just love the 3D flowers. So, um, this was kind of a stretch for me, but I really had a good time with them. I had to think of outside the box. I really did, but you know what? That's what was the fun part about it. That's what I really liked about it. Yeah, you know, I'm sitting here talking and not thinking, well, I should be filling that in a little bit more. I'm gonna need more light than that. <laughs> I'm upside down. I'm gonna turn this way. Actually, not upside down, but the rose is upside down. So what type of videos do you guys look interested in? Are you interested in just the actual individual flower making videos? Um, do you like seeing the cards made step by step? Um... I mean, would you like tutorials on just like, just making the single, let's say like just a single flower. 
or do you like the start to finish or would you like a mixture of both and give me some ideas on what you guys would like to see and as I get better at this maybe I can um, work towards that I would love to hear in the comments, or you can email at melaniestamps at yahoo.com. That is my email address for anyone that is interested in chatting. You can also find me on Facebook, of course. Okay, these big flowers take a little bit of time, so that's the reason I didn't make you sit here through all of it. But I hope this is helpful in seeing how I came up with getting these color combos. And I always, um, color is what drives me when I'm making a card. And I always choose the paper first. And from the paper, I choose the colors I'm going to work with. Um... I choose the ink colors, like from, like if I'm making flowers, I'll choose the stamp pads. If I'm gonna have coordinating papers, I'll choose those. In this case, I choose I chose the um, the markers. And I never just go by the like lids. I actually draw them out on paper and I put them up against the paper. That to me is really helpful. It really makes a difference to me and to the finished card if everything really coordinates. Okay. See, I want to have that definition of the dark and the lights. Because you want, you know, your, your sunlight is hitting where those little light areas are. And the little crevices are all in the shadow. And that's ultimately what I'm after. Okay, that one is done. I want to show you how I did the birthday part on here. Um, for this, I did, I started at the bottoms of these. Uh, I could do this one too. And then I just did, I just drug it up to make it like ombre. I know it's super simple, but that's, that's how I did the sentiment. To where it's darker at the bottom. And of course, if you want it darker, you can put a little more dark at the bottom. You could... You could do a little bit more dark at the bottom. I think for the rest of it, I just did the light pink.
Some people can actually write like this. I could never do that. Let's see, we've got the light pink, so let's do the roses real quick. My husband just came home the other day. Well, actually, he didn't come home. I wasn't feeling good. And I was in the car, and he ran into the store real quick to get... I forgot what he was getting, but he was getting something. And and I told him that I was just going to stay in the car. I was tired, and we were headed home after a long day. And he comes out with this large bouquet of multicolor long stem roses. Had the most beautiful coral and pink and yellow and red roses in it. And he just came up to the door, the passenger side door, and knocked on my window and smiled. And just made my heart leap up into my neck. I mean, it was beautiful. He's such a sweetie. And he made my day. And they're just about all to fall off their... their um, stems but they lasted over a week i was impressed okay so now we're going to get the dies and we're going to take these all together and get these die cut out real quick and then we'll finish this baby up okay so for this one Look at my hands. You can tell Copic artists when their hands get all nasty. So forgive me. Let's see here. Okie dokie, we're going to line these up, and they are relatively easy to line up, as you can see. It would probably be good for me to get tape before I line it up, wouldn't it? I love that you can see through them so you can line up the letters and then you can just kind of glance 
at the rest. See that the little leaves are in place, the roses are in place. My tape sticking to each other. And this one goes right in here. Like I said, you can use this or you don't have to. But I like that these corners go right to the corners. And I line up the vines. Because the vines you can see straight through there. They're like perfect. Okay, so I'm going to run these through my die cut machine real quick. I'm going to make some noise. Go ahead and tape this so they don't. I'm going to cheat and do them both at the same time, but I don't want them to move, so I'm going to tape that down. Ooh, noise real quick. like they cut okay. This is low tack tape that I'm using here, not actually scotch tape, so if anyone's wondering. It does occasionally stick, but not, and then of course I rip the paper right when I say that, right? Not normally, but I usually use it over and over again. Like I said, it's very delicate. But there it is. Okay, toss that in the trash. We will get this out and get these little pieces out of here. All these little extras. Okay, now, with these dies here, there's one more thing I did, just so you can see, and that is I cut a piece of Silver Lux cardstock. Actually, it was like this. I've already cut this, but I ran this through my die cut machine and cut this. And we're going to line this behind um, to give an extra foil layer to the frame. And what I did here, let me show you here. see if I can get both of these in this shot at the same time. I believe you can see both of them. Okay, when I line this up here, if you notice, um, 
I had these dots right along here that I did not like. No matter which way I went, I had these dots. And I didn't like that little bit of line there. So what I did here is I took this and I cut it in half. And it actually goes this way. Okay. And then I attached this just barely over that dot on either side. I lined up this little piece to that corner, this little piece to this corner. Move this out of the way so I can put this in the center now. So you see, you see how I line that up? So I'm wanting to co cover these little dots. So I line this up with that, and then I line this little piece with this corner, and this little piece with this corner. It's like this was made for this die, seriously. And then I did the same thing over here. And that got rid of my dot problem. It leaves this little tiny section in the center but when you add this, it gives you an offset border on either side. And it gives you a little silver shine behind all of your pieces. So it worked out perfectly. So let's go ahead and glue that down real quick. Get these little pieces out of here. I was really shocked when I saw how this piece lined up with, with this frame, the Majestic Swirls frame, because they don't go together, but it just, it was like magic. Oh, there's another one. Okay. If you have not used the Lux Silver and Lux Gold cardstock in your projects, you guys are missing out. This stuff brings your projects to a whole new level. So, stock up. It's high quality and it's, I mean, it just makes your projects just stand out. Okay. Make sure it's going in the right direction. We've got our vine at the bottom. So, and like I said, we're going to line it up with this corner. We're going to line up that and cover the dots. Whoops. This dry is clear. Dries pretty fast. So, we're going to line up just barely covering the dots. Corner and corner. Covering the dots. Okay. There we go. Looks good. Okay. You know, I really didn't need all that glue. I really shouldn't have put all that glue. I should have just put the glue around the frame. I just won't push it down. Okay. Let's push it down out here because you want that, that actually to stand up. So we just won't push those pieces down. You really just want to glue it along the frame pieces. I'm going to put a little glue under here so this little squirrel stays down. Remember this is dry clear so if anything comes out the edges it should be okay. Now for this piece before we glue it down let's do a little glittering to it. Now in my before I finished when I was playing around originally with my first design I did this one first. This is my mess up and I glittered the roses 
and I'll bring this up to you so you could see it. It dulled out my coloring of the roses. So I decided I was going to color it up again. And this time I played around with the baby's breath and I added prills to the baby's breath here. And I didn't like the way the prills looked. So I did this with the baby's breath and I liked this technique better. So when I colored it up the second time, I decided I was not going to, uh, you can see the difference here. Let's see, make sure I'm in the camera here. I was not gonna glitter the roses. I wanted my coloring to show in the roses, but I was going to do the baby's breath with the baby's breath glitter. So that's what I'm gonna, we're gonna do here. And I'll show you how I did that. Get my little tidy tray out. Okay, this is actually the Art Glitter Baby's Breath. It's a transparent, ultra fine transparent glitter. It's very sparkly, pretty. Um, and with your Dries Clear glue, all you're gonna do is dot. Everywhere where you see the dots, just dot away. You don't want to squeeze too much, you just want to dot. Okay. So we got all that dotted. Then we'll go ahead and just sprinkle the baby's breath on. And we'll tap it all off. And you'll just have it right where you want it, right where the baby's breath is. Isn't that pretty? And if there's anywhere you want to add more, you can. I'm going to leave it just like that. I think it picked up right where I wanted it. It's not too splotchy like if you had big lumps of glue anywhere. And that's what I wanted. I wanted a light coating that looked like baby's breath. So that's what I was after. to glue our frame on here. So now, for this, I'm going to line up these sides so that there's the same exact amount of silver on both sides. Because ultimately, that's what, because we spread that silver out, you're going to have the same amount of silver on each side, roughly. But it gives it a nice border. And then these other pieces are just going to line up, give or take. Line up just beautifully. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? All right, looking good. Okay, still the right orientation. I didn't mess it up. <laughs> okay, now for our sentiment. For the sentiment, I decided this was too big for this. So I decided to cut it apart. So what I did is I wanted just the birthday 
in the middle. So I went ahead and cut off the flowers and the happy. And the to you. Okay. So I'm going to clean this up a little bit, just curving the edges, just so it looks like it was made to just say birthday. And then I went ahead and just said, happy birthday on mine. You could add the to you if you wanted to, but I just did happy birthday because I wanted to add the other little roses on the bottom right hand corner. So I just put birthday in the center. Like that. And then this was too big for up here. So I decided to cut these little roses off. I'm giving this whole sentiment a haircut, aren't I? But that's okay. That's where creativity comes in and you make it your own. That's all what creativity is all about. And that's the beautiful thing about being able to see something and totally make it your own. So I put happy up here. And then for these little roses, I put them one here. And this one had a little thing here to cut off. And this one down the side here. Thought that was pretty to set off the top. And then for these guys, since we're not putting any flowers on the card, I decided to trim these lot guys up and add them just as extra fillers for this bare circle down, or corner down here. You could totally leave them off if you didn't, if you wanted. You could just put one if you wanted. You can make it your own. Or you could put the for you down there if you wanted to. So that's how I finish the card up is by doing like that. Happy birthday to you. Or happy birthday. But if you wanted to take these off, you could put to you down here. Or you could put to you in here. You know, you could, I mean, you could make it your own. I just didn't see a place that I liked the way it looked. So that's the reason I left it off, she opted to leave it off. But a little bit. It right there and I opted to put these guys right down here oops Okay, 
So we'll put the birthday in here. Look at that straight on so I can move it a little bit. There you go. Put the happy up here. And then add these two little flowers. Where'd the other little one go? Aha. And there we go. And for this last, for the inside piece, all I did was trim a little bit of this top piece off. Go ahead, I'll trim it where the, see if that's enough. Not quite. You always can take more. You can't take less. I mean, you can't go back and take less. Line up your bottom. There you go. So glue that in place and your card is finished. There you go. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and um, come back and see me for another one. I hope you hit subscribe and share if you have enjoyed this, and I will see you next time. Take care, my friends. Bye-bye.